introduction of the Full Day Early Learning Kindergarten program has increased information sharing around a student's educational plan. With this new classroom dynamic came a new set of privacy challenges. Many ELK team members do not realize that much of the information they deal with daily is the least protected. Unattended computer screens, unlocked filing cabinets or desk drawers, as well as papers and reports left on desks potentially expose large amounts of private data. Often, only a quick glance can result in the student's privacy being undermined, usually going undetected. An example of this is the storage of anecdotal documentation. ELK teams regularly keep notes about student behavior, abilities, and general well-being. However, these notes can be found scattered on post-it notes or loose sheets of paper. Educators should instead store anecdotal data in a central location, such as a file folder or agenda book that can be securely stored when not in use. Access to this documentation must be limited to the ELK team or school principal unless other permission is expressly given. Failure to properly secure anecdotal documentation may result in a privacy breach. Probably the most important aspect of digital data protection is the privacy and security of passwords. It is not uncommon to find a post-it note stuck to a computer screen or in a planner that contains passwords. Other times, it might be in a file named passwords. While these may be convenient, they are also easy targets and are the root of many serious privacy breaches. Educators may find it necessary to share passwords or use password-protected folders to store the anecdotal notes on students. If so, it is recommended that educators speak with their IT departments to ensure the security of this information. The need for ELK teams to use secure passwords is paramount. Weak passwords are by far the most common reason for computer data breaches. According to Wired Magazine, the most popular password is Password1. It used to just be password. 123456 and QWERTY round out the top three. A recent study showed that using the 1,000 most popular passwords, followed by a popular suffix like 1, 123, or ABC, cracked 24% of passwords on the internet. Other studies have shown that many passwords are nothing more than names of family members, pets, or of the user. Regardless of how unique users may believe a name to be, it is not and can be hacked as easily as opening a phone book. In order to design a secure password, it is essential to avoid using dictionary words or obvious strings of numbers. It needs to be as random as possible, using a combination of letters and numbers, using a mixture of lower and uppercase as well. It should also be at least eight characters long. For example, Mustang1 is a very insecure password. However, Mustang532 with a capital S and T is much more secure. Another way to make a memorable password is to create an acronym only the user knows. For example, I have two dogs called Rover and Fido would become IH2DCRAF. This would be considered an almost unbreakable password. A typical school day will see the ELK team involved in dozens of conversations about their students. Some will be with parents, others between the teacher and an early childhood educator, and some may even take place with principals or educational assistants. Many of these conversations will contain private information that needs to be protected. Section 32 of the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, MFIPA, and Section 266 of the Education Act clearly defines those authorized to share in private information. This is limited to those within the ELK team, a school principal, and superintendents. Others may be included with parental permission or as circumstances arise. For example, an educational assistant is also authorized to engage in some protected conversation. However, the EA should only be involved when it is directly related to the instructional pathways of the child they work with. Other professionals may be involved as well, but only if appropriate permission has been granted. Some schools have before and after school programs that are run by a third party. 
In this case, care must be taken to ensure sensitive information is not shared unnecessarily. Exceptions can be made if the student's health is at risk, such as a food allergy. However, any extraneous health information shared may result in a violation of the Provincial Health Information Protection Act, PHIPAA. ELK teams engaged in a private conversation must be sure that students or another unauthorized party cannot overhear the discussion. Overheard conversations are one of the most prevalent reasons for privacy breaches and also the most preventable. In 2010, an educator from Sweden was caught on a public bus speaking about other staff members and students on her cell phone. This caused multiple complaints to the school board and ultimately led to her termination. ELK teams must be aware of who might overhear a conversation and do their best to isolate themselves. If an educator must engage in a conversation with another person, the following three questions will help avoid a breach. Is this person authorized to discuss this student? Can anyone else overhear the conversation? Does the conversation stay relevant to the topic? Or is more information being shared than necessary? With common sense and a general understanding of the privacy laws, ELK teams can be confident they will be able to protect the information of their students and fellow staff.